Harbor Freight Electric Chainsaw versus Pecan Tree, William Hovey Smith, 2018. I'm the author of Backyard Deer Hunting, and we have events in our backyard. In short, Hurricane Matthew dropped a large pecan tree on one of my sheds, and I'm cleaning it up with this electric saw. This is Hopi Smith, the backyard sportsman. And we are in the process of recovering from the latest hurricane. Yep. Yeah. This little pile here represents debris from my pecan trees that I've been picking up. It's also the opening week of regular deer season. So obviously I've been out in the woods too. Now I have old pecan trees in my yard, some of which are well over 100 years old. But my old trees did good. I was in Germany when the hurricane occurred, and what I expected to find, some limbs about this big around, and oh, 15, 20 feet long, dropped on the ground. But that didn't happen. And I'll show you what did. Instead of long limbs from a tree like that coming down, actually, one of my younger trees was completely uprooted and toppled. Yeah. Now that tree was only about, oh, say 80 years old. A healthy, healthy, vigorous tree. And why did it fall and the older trees still stand? Now some of these old trees, geese are coming over. It is fall after all. Some of these old trees were hollow trunked. And if I was going to lose a tree, I had expected it to be one of them. Not so. Why? Part of what happened to this tree has to do with a root ball. Uh, you notice that the roots on here, those you can see, those are exposing nice, fresh, healthy wood. I mean, there's nothing wrong with that wood. But, at the very center where I'm going to point right now, where the tap root would be, you'll see it's blackened and rounded. And it's been that way for many, many years. Right there. And what that represents was that grew down to a standing water table, not too far below the surface, which prevented the roots from penetrating further and anchoring the tree. Then, when we had the hurricane through, the wind whipped around the corners of my house and actually, I think, exerted an upward pressure on the tree. Literally, lifting it and then blowing it over. And that's the reason this tree fell, I believe, whilst our other older and arguably weaker trees survived without significant damage. Well, here is my tree and work area revealed. Uh, when Matthew came through here, the eye of the storm passed almost directly over the top of the house, apparently. And we had about 55 mile an hour winds and seven inches of rain. So my soils are still wet and soggy underneath the grass. And when the tree toppled, it fell against my shed over there, which you can see in white. And I don't know if it damaged it or not. I can't see enough of it to tell. Uh, we'll find that out uh, after a bit. And now as I pan around, you can see the tree and the trunk. So what are we going to do about it? I'm going to get my electric chainsaw, which you've seen before, and start working on this tree, and we're going to see how much of it we can move with that saw. But we'll string enough cords together to at least start trimming all the way to the tip of those limbs. 
Now on the other side, uh, we're going to wait on that for a while. It's probably going to take me all a day uh, to get this side of the tree limbed and cleaned up. And in the meantime, we'll let the other side of the yard dry out a little bit because I certainly don't want to get stuck. We're going to start our first cutting with our Harbor Freight Portland 14-inch electric chainsaw. Now, previously, I used it to cut up a fallen limb, just one limb. Now it is going to tackle an entire tree. Well, I do not expect this little saw to cut through the trunk of that tree. Uh, I have a larger saw for that and that's what I'm going to use. But this makes a good saw for trimming up the smaller stuff. So what I'm going to use this saw for is to cut the smaller limb, say to four inches. And that way I'll be able to expose the trunk and also incidentally open my shed, which I can't do right now, and which contains a lawnmower that I need to finish cutting the yard, as well as drag some of these pieces around and hunt and plant my food plot. So this is going to be multiple tasking today. Hopefully what we'll be able to do is get some of the small limbs down so I can at least open my shed and retrieve my lawnmower and other cutting tools. I'm going to start trimming on some of these smaller limbs that you see before you. And so I can run the extension cord uh, directly to the door of the shed, which is still about 10 feet in front of me. Okay, that is the first one down. So we've got a long way to go as you see, but we're going to whack up these things as we go. The key to working a big tree like this is to take one limb down and then finish it, uh, cut it all up and then tackle the next limb, rather than get in there and start cutting stuff just because you have the saw in front of you and getting all tangled up in a variety of branches. Uh, with a chainsaw, particularly if you're doing this by yourself, you don't want to take that risk because you can easily, even with an electric chainsaw, uh, get yourself a foul of it uh, if you happen to stumble. We have the first limb cut up and hauled away now in a cart full of wood as you see. Now the tops I'm pulling over to the side and we'll get those to the burn pile probably day after tomorrow or so, after the dry wood on the burn pile, dry quote unquote, has a chance to get some heat on it and lose some moisture. We've had seven inches of rain on that wood, so even though a lot of it was dead, it's still pretty wet. And I want that dry wood to ignite the wet stuff I'm going to be putting on top of it. This small branch that's sticking up in the middle of the frame that's going vertical, uh, I'm going to take that off next. Because if this tree rotates, I don't want anything like that uh, hitting me or anyone else. Now the tree is stable as it sits. And I am being very cautious not to cut anything that's bearing load. Uh, you don't want to rotate this tree until you know exactly how it's suspended and how you want to pull it. For those who haven't used a chainsaw much, both the top and the bottom will cut. For example, on this limb right here, I'm going to relieve it by making a cut at the bottom, and then I'll finish it by making a cut at the top. We started from the bottom and made a cut up to about here, then we started from the top and dropped the rest of it. But this is the first limb that's actually bearing that I'm going to cut. 
So when I cut that, I can expect the tree to move some. Now there are plenty of other limbs that are also bearing pressure. So I think I'll be able to take that one off without too much difficulty or without having the tree shift on me to any great degree. But uh, we're already cleared out everything around it. So if it starts to move, I can move. And so we're gonna start cutting on that one down at the lower end. That one's free, and you did see the tree just shift ever so slightly. Now, I went ahead and filed uh, with my insurance company, but I have, uh, like many rural homeowners do who are elderly, a rather large deductible on my policy. So I have to show $4,000 worth of damage. Well, I don't think this is going to make that uh, or even come close. So uh, we're going to start cutting and uncovering my shed and see what's going on. In the midst of that tree, uh, we're talking about the very top of the tree now, and there's a bunch of small entangling stuff. I'm just going to have to clear that stuff out so I can actually get to the bigger limbs and see what they're doing. So for a time, I'm actually going to be working underneath the tree. We've now cleared out from under our shed, and I can for the first time get at my cart, which has most of my cutting tools in it. But uh, that limb is resting on the top of the shed roof. So is anything going to happen to that tree when I cut it? Uh, don't think so. I don't think it's got that much pressure on it. But we're going to go ahead and take that one down very close to the roof line. So if I have to duck out of the way around the side of the building in a hurry, I can. showing some signs of closing up at the top so it is under some pressure but it's almost cut through okay and there it went all right so that successfully be accomplished after about four hours work, the little Portland chainsaw here is doing well. Uh, we've just about cleaned up one branch. I have only five more to do. Uh, we've uncovered the back of our shed here, and I can now get my lawn tractor to my cart, which also incidentally contained most of my cutting tools that were covered up. So uh, we are making progress. Uh, we're about to make a breakthrough to the door of the shed, and uh, we'll do that either this afternoon or tomorrow. But right now, I'm going to go out and get my deer stand, because the deer is supposed to be moving right now. I do hunt, and among my books are backyard deer hunting, crossbow hunting, extreme muzzle loading, and an e-book series that includes shooting and maintaining your muzzle loader as well as hunting with muzzle shotguns and smoothbore muskets. We are now inside the belly of the beast, so to speak. Uh, I, I have cleared to the corner of the shed now, and I'm about to tackle these limbs. And we've taken our extension cord and run it in as straight a line as I can 
to our plug on the house. And I also have two additional extension cords here that I'll add on as I need them. So we'll probably have enough cord, I think, to reach all the way around to the front of the shed as we remove more material. So far as the saw is going, we did make a small adjustment. The saw blade had loosened a little bit, and this requires a half inch wrench. And you just remove this little cap right here, and it shows the bolt, and then you just tighten that and you're ready to go. We've also been using mineral oil as a lubricant, and so we're going to add a little bit more and continue our cutting. We have made a breakthrough. Uh, I have cut the path all the way clear by the side of the shed, as you can see. Now I can pull in both directions and stack in both directions, which is a considerable aid. I still have this considerable pile of mess to move before I can get to my shed door. However, the tree is not bearing on the shed awfully much. Uh, a little bit perhaps, but to a very minor degree. The main part of this fallen tree is very well supported closer to the root ball, which is just fine. So I can cut this stuff without any real problem, except in regards to the weight of the branch I'm cutting at the time. Well, it's five o'clock, a self-imposed quitting time, and we didn't quite make it through to the door, but I can at least see it through the foliage back in there. Tomorrow morning, we shall proceed. It is the following morning and we're getting ready to resume. And this is a close-up of my shed. And basically, we have three branches blocking the way. Uh, this one is the largest remaining, although I have two more that are right up against the building itself. So we're going to get started on these. Now, uh, last night I did some maintenance on the saw. I cleaned it out and retightened the chain and got some more oil, went to town. And so we're ready to resume, but I haven't sharpened the blade. Uh, this has been an unusually sharp blade for this particular saw. Uh, it's cut very, very well, and it's still cutting reasonably well. After I get through with today's work and getting this cleared, I'll take it down and actually resharpen it. But for right now, we want to get this last three tops out of here. The branches in the tops of this pecan tree are so interlaced and intertangled after they'd fallen and collapsed on each other, that I'm having to unpack this pile from the top down. But I can at least see my door now. Uh, I have three more to go and then I'll be actually able to get my lawn tractor out but not try to do it all today because guess what I got a food plot to plant today because it might rain tomorrow. We've now exposed the doorway to our shed but we also have some problems. Here on the lean-to portion there are two branches one of which has actually penetrated the roof. If I attempt to pull that straight out it is going to pull that branch and all the end pieces through the roof itself, which will do even more damage than it's doing now. So what I'm going to attempt to do is we have a branch on our tree overhead. And I'm going to pass a line over the top of that. So we get an upward pull rather than a downward pull and hopefully can pull it more or less straight out of its hole that it's broke through the roof and do less damage as a consequence. I also have a problem with my door. Uh, although I can unlock it and pull on it, I cannot open it. So I'm also going to use a winch on the door handle and see if I can get it open that way. So we 
we've got it attached, we're putting the hook through both loops and an overhand knot here that will increasingly tighten as I apply pressure. I can see what's going on, so we'll make sure we don't uh, do more damage than we do good. As you see, that had exactly the desired effect. And so now we have an open door, and I didn't bend it, mutilate it, or otherwise overly disturb it. Uh, whatever's going on on the inside of the door frame, maybe I can correct, but at least I have a good door to do it with. We've attached that rope to that limb which has gone through the roof there to a, another branch which is almost directly over the top of the camera. And the idea is to get an upward pull on that branch rather than drag the top all the way through the roof, which would be what would happen if you tried a straight horizontal pull, I fear. So we're going to start up the winch and see what happens. Well, we have the branch almost completely pulled from the top. I think I'll be able to pull it down by hand now. But yeah, that was the way to do that. Well, now we have it down and I can work on it at my leisure. This is a winch on my Ford Ranger hunting truck as it was brand new and I've used it many, many times. Now, I did get my food plot planted and covered before it rained later that afternoon. My newest book is Create Your Own Job Security. Plan to start your own business at midlife. What I advocate here is that a person start many businesses to do what they need to do at the time. And when they are middle-aged in their 40s and older, they already have their own business established and running in the background while they're working for someone else. Then, if suddenly they get unexpectedly laid off, they have a business to fall back on that's already well-developed and actually making money. It's going to take me some days to remove this tree and get this yard restored. The Harbor Freight Portland electric chainsaw was very useful in cutting smaller branches. Now I cut this wood while it's still green. Now I'm going to do additional videos about the tree and what I do. For more information on my books, blogs, and more than 700 videos, you can go to my website, www.hoviesmith.com. For information on my business book, go to createyourownjobsecurity.com. Good hunting and good eating from the outdoors. Goodbye and God bless.